Hey everyone and welcome to another Sasquatch Theory film. In today's video we will be traveling to Greenville, Missouri to interview a guest who has been on the channel before. Andrew and his dog were riding down a bike trail when they noticed a lot of helicopter activity in the park and a heavy presence of law enforcement and game wardens with horse trailers. Andrew noticed a strange creature at the top of the hill trying to evade the helicopters and it crossed the bike trail right in front of him and his dog. The town of Greenville is fairly close to one of my past research areas, and it's an area I have experienced activity myself along with other people I have interviewed in the past. The wooden Sasquatch monument in town at the coffee shop leads me to believe many other people have had cryptid encounters here in the past, and possibly there is a lot of activity in this town. Greenville, Missouri is located on US Route 67 in Wayne County, Missouri, and it runs along the St. Francis River. The population is around 500 people altogether, so it's a very small community. The Battle of Fredericktown took place in Greenville, Missouri. In 1861, during the American Civil War, Union and Confederate forces clashed in a battle outside of Fredericktown, Missouri, which is located just a few miles from Greenville. The Union forces were able to defeat the Confederates, securing the area for the Union Army. Today, we will be talking to Andrew about his dogman encounter that he had on the bike trail. This area of Missouri has a lot of deep wilderness and it's not too far off from David at the Killing Fields and Bill in the Mark Twain National Forest. All right, we're at Greenville. Missouri and I'm meeting up with the guest today to talk about his Bigfoot encounters and experiences that he's had around here We're gonna go out for a bike ride Possibly a few miles and we're gonna see what we can find talk about everything he's experienced out here And I'm excited to be here nonetheless Explain why it happened where it happened, but it happened in an area that you would never expect mm -hmm. Right on the fringe of society. Yeah Anyway, so we'll, we'll, we'll deal with Dog man, ghost man, whatever it says. <laughs> Sounds good. Like I said, I originally parked down there and I rode this portion of the trail right here to kind of avoid these guys. Mm -hmm. And I think actually the first time I came in, I may, I may have went through this field to avoid them too, back behind the tree line might have went behind that field but that trail from there goes up the up to the side of the highway crosses the river and goes over this really cool high point okay. over there and then farther down is the access where i was wanting to camp too and that's on the it's on the south side of the river that would have made it like a 13 minute drive from the campsite to here yeah which isn't bad but no Okay, and the trail entrance is going to be right over here, right over here somewhere. What river is that? The St. Francis? This is the Black River. Black River, Yes. Okay. Doesn't that feed into um, Clearwater Lake or pour out of it? Uh, I think out of Clearwater into uh, Black um, Wapapello. Okay. I just took a report from Lake Wapapello the other day. Okay, yeah, that's right where my, my uh, tree crashing. Uh, and that's pretty close to here, right? Yeah, it's only like 30 minutes around. Okay. So maybe 38 minutes or so, I think. Okay, and this is the way I came in, this trail that comes in from our right here. That's the way I came in. Okay. Whew. 
and this is the trail that follows the creek I was or the river I was telling you about. And this is where the, the uh, Civil War uh, skirmish was too. Really? Yeah, right here. Supposedly they used the uh, terrain to their advantage. <clears throat> this was an existing uh, train track and uh, they just spread out somewhere in here mm. and had a, had a little skirmish. Yeah. It was like 400, sold, 300 uh, Union, or I'm sorry, 300 Confederate, and it was supposedly an army of like 4,000, but oh, wow. they were separated. They weren't all in one group. Yeah. So, but yeah, this is the way we come. We do this, this route a lot, mm. but, but I wouldn't do it as much if I didn't see what I had saw. Yeah. But those conditions would be hard to replicate because of the, the hunting that was going on out here with the helicopter. I think that may have had a lot to do with it. And uh, plus, I, blare, I was blaring my music. And mm -hmm. so, I mean, it was no, no, no regrets, just loud as I could get it. Yeah. But it's real, it's real patchy through here with the cell phone, so it would come and go. Do you get cell phone signal out here? Um, in certain spots. Yeah. Down, down there, if you sit there for about 10 or 15 minutes, you'll get cell phone. And then there's another place up here by the bridge, you'll get cell phone, up by the uh, tunnel, not the bridge. Okay. Yeah. See, and then I tried to contact a couple of these people, but I couldn't find, their, find them because I was going to ask them, whoever owned this, if I could camp out there. Mm. But because uh, then maybe they'd even offer like a little four-wheeler to bring shit out there. No, yeah. You know, sometimes they're, they're like that. It's just hard to go up and say, hey, I, I had this furry experience. Mm -hmm. You know, what do you do? You know, how do you, how do you explain that to people? Because I've tried explaining it to two people that I know and love in my life. And the amount of, the amount of, what can you say that? Ridicule? Not even ridicule, just the way they, they the shunned it. The Well, it was, I had a good word for it, but uh, the, the way they discounted my, my, my sister, I, I love her the most in my life, and she had nothing, didn't want to hear nothing about it. It's your imagination, the whole nine yards. It's all your imagination. It can't be. Mm. Once, yeah, I got it. But this is, this is I, my first experience of something supernatural was probably started when I was about four or five years old, and I never paid no attention to it. Mm -hmm. I asked maybe three or four people if they saw what I saw, and nobody saw it. Nobody. Yeah. And now... The way my sister's like, nah, that, that you didn't, you don't, you don't, you were just dreaming that you woke up, crawled to that, seen this, stood up, did this, and went back to bed. You were dreaming that. Yeah. Well, that's what. You imagined what we, it. It was a bear, a homeless person, could have been anything. But that's it. the thing is, what I had seen mm -hmm. as a kid, yeah. I started seeing it as, as a shadow on a house. Mm -hmm. And it looked like a Sasquatch craw crawling up it, you know, horizontally. Not, not crawling up the, the how you put it, uh, like a wrought iron porch standard. Mm -hmm. And that's where, that's where the weirdness began, but I, I took it as what it was, and then I only had one, if it was a dream, it was a very lucid dream, because I remember it like it was yesterday. And it's the only dream I can honestly say I remember to a T. So if it was a dream, a ama it's an amazing dream. Second of all, if it was a dream, I, I think I was really awake when that happened. Yeah, hey, they say they can get into your dreams or affect your dreams somehow. Well, I've heard some people say they've had some strange Sasquatch dreams. It would have been a strange one because I, whatever the shadow was there for years until the, I, I think it didn't come down until the tree got cut down as out in front of it. Mm. But the, and that's not even odd that you see a shadow like that on a, on a house. The fact that it looked like a Sasquatch and nobody else could see it but me. Yeah. Nobody. I asked, I know three people in my life, my mom, Randy Roberts, and Eddie, I forget his last name, all neighbors, except huh. for my mom. She was, I kind of lived with her. But, uh, <laughs> so those, th I asked him, and when they, and when Eddie started ridiculing me about it, it's like, man, you're kidding me. No, I, you, you got me out, out of the house at 10 o'clock for this, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, I just never told anybody else, and I just lived with it all through high school and until I joined the Army. It was still there when I got back from the Army. Nah. And uh, now it's gone. I, I, you know, I, I don't know that I've been out there in 10 years to look mm -hmm. at it, but uh, anyway, so okay. we, got a, we got about another half mile to go. So when I was coming from up the hill that direction, had Sabo off leash and he was booking it along this ridge line up on top of that hill, comes through this saddle coming up this hill and as I'm coming around this corner right there, just before the corners when I was looking up there and I saw it right up there on, I mean, if it wasn't the top of the hill, it was really close. 
and it was looking over here into that saddle looking for Sabo, and I don't think it had seen me yet, but when it's, once it saw me, it looked shocked and surprised. Because I'm booking it down this trail. I come around that corner, and by the time I get around that corner, it's moving down this hill. And it came across this hill right here, and it stopped. And, I, and I'm going to say it's, it had to have stopped it either that triple trunk tree right there, the one little small 12 inch tree that's this way of it, or this, this bigger 14, 16 inch tree right here. There's one of those three trees, it stopped. And I remember passing by it, hey, Sable, looking over, my, look, looking over my right shoulder at first, and I didn't see anything as soon as I passed that area. Uh, so, I, and I just, I went maybe 30, 40 yards, depending on where I saw it at stopped, waited on him to show up, and he was coming down that hill right on the same path that that whatever it was. Uh, shadow person, dog man. At this point, I'm, I'm up in the air on what it is, but I know what I saw. And it just, it appeared to have a, when it turned, when it, when it saw me and it turned to start running down this hill, that's when it kind of had the that that prolonged effect of getting started like i was telling you about earlier like the like the starting of a steam engine train how that how that big piston fires the first few times yeah it probably fired two maybe three times kind of slow where i noticed it had a weird gait to it and then all of a sudden it just took off like it wasn't i mean it wasn't lightning speed but it was i mean it was fast faster than my dog probably and uh came down this hill and that's where he crossed the trail, stopped at one of those three trees, crossed, just looked at me, just dead, dead at me. About how high up on that hill did you start to see him? Um, all the way to the top. I mean, all the way to the very peak of it is where I started to see him. Because I was coming down here, you can't really see where I started seeing him at because I didn't believe it at first, and I just kept going. And he was right up there. I mean, we, I could walk you right up there. Um, he... Uh, that's where I saw it, and that's where it turned to kind of make that chug and went boom, boom. And that's, and then he come down this hill. I'm thinking he was either heading to the river, but when I stopped, I didn't hear no water splashing. There was water all through there. You can see that that's a fairly steep bank. Nothing that's a human's going to want to go down there. Mm. Whatever it was, I know it was over seven foot tall, um, but it looked, it looked more like a dog to me. And then the first thing I thought after doing some research was, um, the Egyptian Anubis. Yeah. That's after doing research. And then I kind of leaned into Dogman. And then I heard a show. I forget who it was. I think I sent you a text about it. But she started, started talking about shadow people. And so I'm thinking, then I started thinking about the event back home that I was telling you about, the long term event I had with that shadow. Mm. Um, that, it's a, that it may have been a shadow person. I, I can't. What was it? I mean. Yeah. Until somebody has one in hand, I don't know what it was. But it looked like s something jet black. No, no, absolutely not. It was gray. It looked like okay, a set yeah, of. Yeah. It looked at first. I thought it was a huge, a, like a seven or eight foot tall jogger, mm. with a tight set of sweats on, like the older sweats that we used to wear, and probably had them in the military. I don't know if you if, you, if that rings a bell to you. Um, mm -hmm. Just the old gray sweats, except for they was more tapered, like the like the like the stuff that they wear, like. Um, like uh, almost like a set of scrubs that they wear nowadays that, that are kind of tighter around the ankles and what have you. Mm. And I, that's what I was going through my mind at first. And I couldn't discern that there was any hair. It was just a flat gray. It was just gray, you know, mm. not, not, not like flat, but like a, like a light gray. Mm -hmm. And it moved and it could have been the lights or the way the sun was, I don't know, but it just, when it turned to make its move, it moved fast. Yeah. And it was, it had to have been, It was tall because I saw it. I saw it probably six, eight foot higher than what we are now, sitting on top of my bike, another three foot. Um, well, not three, another foot and a half. But I mean, it's. I was up there, and I but I saw it, and it was. It was just too tall to be a human. Plus, the the, the way it slopes down right there. Mm -hmm. If it would have came this way, it would have had to have taken the trail behind me, which it wouldn't have because it would have had to come from behind the tree. It had already disappeared behind the tree by the time I passed it, but I thought it was going to still be there, but it was gone. <laughs> yeah. 
because yeah. I was like, oh shit, it's going to get me now. And I looked over my shoulder and there was nothing there. Yeah. And then, so I just, I didn't go far to stop to get him. Once I got him hemmed up, we stopped up there on top of the hill where that picnic back, or the picnic uh, table was, or it still is. Stopped there for a good 20, 30 minutes and I didn't hear or see or smell nothing. Nothing, not anything. And I just, and that's when I turned around and I went, I left, went past the, the Rangers and the, and the Corps of Engineer police officers that were out there in the truck. Now, by the time I got back, the helicopter was landed though. It had landed, I think when I was, I think when I was up here coming down the trail from Greenville to the, to the tunnel, that's when I heard it flying by, but I, I was flying so low I couldn't see it, so I knew it was out here, but it, was, it had landed by the time I got back there. Um, yeah, this is the spot, <laughs> this is it. I would say he was not far, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a big tree. Mm -hmm. I see it. Up there on the very top of that hill, it's either right there or see where that one is that's kind of dead and it's just about half of the tree. Mm -hmm. Right Somewhere it. in between that area, it would be right where I saw him. If not, it was been a little farther that way. Because remember, I was when I first seen him, I was coming at a different angle, and I was looking up the side of that hill. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, if you if you wanted to, that's a, that's not a that's way farther than it looks. I've 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 walked it up to about halfway. Okay. So and there is kind of a little little Peter Path trail right there too. So it's hard, it's hard to navigate by tree, you know. <laughs> yeah. Go to the tree. <laughs> What are you doing, buddy? Yeah, when I get up there, you'll have to direct me. Okay, yeah. All right, I'm walking up to the spot where Andrew had his encounter. It's actually a pretty steep hill. Looks like there's a lot of deadfall in here, possibly from the wind. <clears throat> We shall see. Chris Barachi. Okay. Okay. Yeah, just try to film me walking through here. Where'd it, uh, right over here? Yeah, it'd have been, it could have been that tree right to your left there, that big one. Cause I seem to remember looking, it was like a big tree right next to me. And it so could it have been this down? triple trunk came down right there? Yeah, I would have think it came down right in there. If it was this triple trunk, I do seem to remember this portion of this tree wasn't down that day. Okay. And then I came back the next time and then this portion was down. Yeah. But I don't, I can't, I mean, my memory from, from a year ago, I just color tree and it might've been right here, but that sucker was up there that tall. I mean, okay. when it, when his hands, when it put its hands like this and looked at me, and uh -huh. its hands, mind you, were, there was something irregular about them too, because they looked like like the thumbs were tucked in like that mm -hmm. when I seen it. And when it ran, it moved just like you would think a human would almost. But yeah, when that, it got up there, yeah. That's a big hill up there, honestly. Yeah. And it's real rocky, it's hard to navigate. And that thing did not take no time to get down. It was either this tree, and it seems like it was this tree, or it was that big one there, because I know it was a, it was right over my shoulder, and I looked, and I thought, oh shit, and because I think this was it, and that water was up to at least to the to the to the probably to the top of that tree right there, or the bottom of the tree right there, at least to the top of the the banks and everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, no 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 human would have went splashing through there, yeah. let alone all the briars and shit. And if they did, they would have made noise for days. Because uh -huh. I stopped. If I remember right, if this is the tree that I did see it stop behind, I would have stopped probably by that bigger tree. So hmm. that's maybe 30 yards, maybe 40 yards to that bigger tree right there. And that's where I stopped and he was coming down. 
he came down right in this area, so I think it was that tree. He came down and he, that's where he turned it, turned to come to me. That bigger tree over there? Yeah, because it was like he almost, like he lost scent right here. Okay. And he, he turned, that's when he stopped and he came right to me like nothing ever happened. You know, of course, he's panting a lot because he's been running on that ridge line the whole time. But I think, that, I think it sent, because when I started from the bank, I think that's where it started. Huh. I think he saw it and I, and I didn't. Yeah. And it was out by the road. Because at first I thought he was chasing a car, but the car was gone. But I mean, right. the car went by and then he kept chasing. Hmm. And he would have lost sight of it, he probably would have stopped. And then so he made it almost to the road from the bank. And so once I got him, got a hold of him there, that's when I put him on the leash and went all the way to under the tunnel again and let him off 20, maybe 40 yards after the tunnel thinking, oh, he won't do that again. Right. And then it wasn't 20, 30 yards later, boom, there he goes. Right off, and I was like, son of a bitch. So that's when I, that's when I hit the gas on the bike, well, I, the gas being my legs. Right. And uh, that's when I just picked up speed and started coming and I was yelling for him. And when I got to that corner, it's maybe half mile to the bridge mm -hmm. or to the tunnel, I should say. Maybe a half mile from, from, from that point. I let him off and he was running the whole way. He just, he took off and I thought I was gonna lose him for a minute, you yeah. know, cause he was, he was only a year old, you know. So and, he, the dog was a lot younger. Yeah, time. in January, February, he would have been, this happened in January, he would have been 11 months old. Okay. So, and so now he's, now he's two, but uh, yeah. I can't explain it. Yeah. I, and it, and to me, if it had been a Sasquatch, there, there would be no question. Mm -hmm. it, it, it just wasn't. Like I said, it could have been a shadow person or a dog man. The first thing that came to my mind when I started actually looking at pictures of stuff, as soon as I seen the Anubis, I was like, that's it. That's what I saw. But it's probably a dog man. Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could, could have very well been. But the only thing, because it didn't look like the shadows that I saw as a child. Mm -hmm. I mean, what I saw as a child looked more like this, the Sasquatch that I saw October of 22. Mm -hmm. So and that was, and that's where a lot of my, like it, it just a bunch of weird stuff started happening. Um, I would say my first UFO encounter was with my uncle Dallas and he didn't even see it because he was driving and it was not 300, 400 feet away from us. Yeah. Oh, uh, on the eastern property line of Tinker Air Force Base, just north of it, not even a mile north, not even a, not even half a mile north mm -hmm. of Tinker Air Force Base, and I saw something in the sky that was just blocking all the lights. And so then, after this experience yeah. here, strange things started to take place here and there. No, this was the last of my major strange experiences. This one was my last okay. major strange experience. I've had, still have a lot of the. Um, how can you say just a lot of ironic things happen? Mm -hmm. um, but this is the last sighting of any kind of creature that I, that I can say was something that wasn't earthly or wasn't, I can't say it isn't earthly now, um, that I had never seen before. It's, this is the first time I couldn't explain what I saw. Mm -hmm. Well, second time I couldn't explain what I saw of something terrestrial that's running on the earth and then anything in the sky or underwater. I've had a lot of experiences with with UFOs, probably eight now, and then one USO. And uh, yeah, okay. we'll talk about Dogman though. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and I, and I want to say this this may have been down. I might not have noticed it because it looks like it's been there long, down longer than a year. But mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I just remember looking over my shoulder and I was like, what the hell? And that thing, I'm not kidding you. That thing had to have been up to there. Okay. Up to there high. How high would you say that is? I'm going to say that's eight. 10, 12 foot though. Because yeah. oh, if it yeah, was standing there. down here. Yeah, down there it'd be. Yeah, it had to have been up there. Yeah, about 10. Had 10 foot basketball goal size and uh -huh. it might have been 10, 12 foot. And it... So certainly not a human being that came no, down the hill. But it didn't seem that tall when I, when I was farther distance coming down the hill. I thought seven, eight foot, you know. Mm -hmm. that, Seeing it now and kind of thinking about it, I don't know. Did it shimmy up the middle of these trees and I just didn't look up? I, I, you'd think I'd have heard it because I didn't. 
I would have seen it if it had started as soon as it disappeared. Cause remember it, it kind of looked at me and then just disappeared. You know, just like it just phew, was gone. And I think possibly it being in that gray color, mm -hmm. if it was anything dogmanish or uh, Sasquatchish, it was in some kind of transformational phase. Like it heard me, wanted to get out of town, but then, then I saw it and it was probably just like either it was either setting up to to eat Sabo because he was like looking right in his direction because he has those bells going he might have had two bells going that day but uh I, it seemed like he as soon as I saw me that's when he was like because he's like I said when he turned and that leg just went chug 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 chug, chug you know and then he was moving so you think it was probably hunting the dog could have been probably could have been it was either that or the music was also blaring it out because usually I'll have music coming down this hill and it stops right in this area so um, what's the music for just to listen to me yeah I don't know if you're more. doing like a Les Stroud thing where you're trying to avoid bears or something no more for just uh, more for just to pay homage more to the to the to the tribal way of things I think if I think I well I know Bigfoot's out there and I know they know what tribal drum music is, and I know they probably recognize it as, as human, but they probably don't fear it as much as they do. Well, uh, you can say what you want about country music, but I know that, I know Sasquatch will never, never be caught dead listening to rap. Right. <laughs> they like metal music. <laughs> yeah, I don't doubt it either, you know? Yeah. So, there's my boy. <laughs> See if I can get it on film. So those are the same helicopters? I don't know if it's the same one, same type. Oh wait, let's see if it comes around. No, that's a Jet Ranger, I may be wrong. That's a first. I'm never wrong on my helicopters. No, that's not even a Jet Ranger. That's, that may be one of those Euro, European Helicopters I might not know much about. It's too far away for me to really see it, but yeah. it's 1115. Okay. So we can, if you want, we can ride into town, grab something to eat. Or if you're, if you want to grab something, anyway, it's, it's maybe a mile and a half, two miles. Mm. I mean, did you bring food? I got food too. We can eat later yeah. at, in town if you want. And we'll just okay. see what we got. Okay. Yeah. Um, also, if you wanted to ride into town to get, you know, to see where I'm talking about where he first alerted, because he, here it comes again. It might be a Jet Ranger with a new, with one of the newer ones with the four bladed main rotor. Uh -huh. I don't have much of experience with them, but it definitely sounds turbine. Yeah, I heard it earlier when you were talking, but it yeah. was kind of in a distance. I didn't know if it was a semi truck or helicopter. Yeah, I can see where they kind of sound like rum, rumble strips. I wonder what they're doing. Yeah, you never know. Didn't I didn't see anything like a boom, like a spray boom. Mm -hmm. It could be it could be a people hunting hogs again. Yeah. Who knows? Okay, so what were you doing that day when you came out here and had an experience? <coughs> Do you want to talk about that first or the experiences that you've had no, earlier in your life? We'll just talk about the dogman experience. Okay, so tell me a little bit about yourself, what you did that day and what happened here. All right, my name is Andy. I I uh, have fa a lot of family in this area, from this area and this area has kind of always been a, a retreat for some of them, especially in our younger years. And so I've known the area, but I've been away from it for any amount of 25 years. I haven't been back until it would have been January, the second weekend of January, I think. Came out here, had a real uneventful experience, but had a great <clears throat> time riding the trails. It's perfect for my dog being a puppy to kind of get him off leash. There's not a lot of people. Um, it was it was perfect for us to come out here and kind of work on his obedience, which has turned into what it is now. And uh, so we thought, hey, we'll come out here the next weekend. Well, as I as I was riding that particular first day, I remember passing some signs into the park, and so I turned in and I ended up parking at the boat ramp. It's a little farther down the way, and getting on my bike and park there and then that's so that's kind of always been my base of operations is a parking lot of the boat ramp 
I come back the second weekend, the weekend after that, that particular weekend, um, just to ride my bike again, brought my dog. We had the same get up, orange bike, this same orange shirt on. Well, not the same orange shirt, but another orange shirt, long sleeve. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and a construction jacket, orange and reflective. Um, on top of that, because it was cold in my coveralls and Sabo had his orange jacket on and threw all that stuff on. But this time when I was coming into the park, something had happened and struck me as odd. It was just like a, maybe a 10 or 15 second time lapse where, where it seemed like my time was accelerated. Next thing you know, when I look up, I see a, a red and black Hughes 500 helicopter or MD 500, there's several names. Uh, and they, they were in the Vietnam, they were the, they were the CH2 or the H2. Cayuse, I think is what they call it. Anyway, it's got a lot of different names, gone through a lot of elevation, el evolutions. But this particular helicopter was red and black and I just saw it just kind of fly off in this park that was closed. I knew it to be closed because of the signs that I refused to obey and what have you. I figure it's Corps of Engineer land. That's not a Corps of Engineer sign. I'm gonna go ride this, these trails. And uh, that second weekend, it was I saw that I saw that helicopter fly off, and something wasn't right about it. But I just figured that helicopter belonged to some farmer or something. I hadn't heard the news from anything, and you know, just kind of wrote that off. And then as I was pulling into the parking lot and getting off, my, getting my bike out and ready with the Bluetooth speaker and the orange gloves, orange vest, and all that, and my coveralls, getting them on. Uh, <clears throat> I looked up and I noticed that there was several cars and several trucks down there. And they looked like, at first I kind of thought, well, there's, there's a couple of them are cop cars and a couple of them, you know, are Corps of Engineers. What I figured out by the time I rode around, I saw that they were Corps of Engineer vehicles. Um, and I just rode past them, but off the trail kind of away from them and rode all, all rode this entire trail. I guess it's about three miles into Greenville and turned around after Greenville I probably had a burger and maybe a, a cone or something I don't know a soda I don't remember what I had that particular day but I turned around after after going through the tunnel um, in the People's Bank parking lot to release Sabo who's on a leash um, for the trail you know and I release him but I, I realize when when I'm re when I'm le releasing him he's coiled tight like just like He's, he's every muscle in his body is focused, but I just, whatever reason, I think, oh, he's been listening to me. He follows me and he's doing really good at a year old. So I'm just going to let him go. <clears throat> I let him go. And man, that turned out to be a mistake, man. He took off towards the highway from people's bank. He made it to probably the, where the fence should be. I don't think there's a fence there, but right on the right of way, he made it right to that point. And then for whatever reason, he stopped doing what he was doing and turned around and ran back to me and I leased him up. Got him back on the trail, went back through the tunnel, got 40, maybe 20 to 40 yards outside that tunnel, let him off the leash again, started riding, and it wasn't, it wasn't probably at the 20, maybe 20, 40 more yards, maybe 100 yards. He just took off in the woods again. I thought, oh shit, man, here he goes. So I'm just cruising and cruising and going as fast as I can. I look up. And there's something that had, had stopped on top of the hill, like it had just come to a complete stop and it was, it was pretty big and tall. And at first I thought it was seven or eight foot tall jogger. You know, I thought, but well, nobody's that tall because that's gotta be at least eight foot from my perspective. And mind you, I'm on my bike cruising, got loud tribal American drums playing. And I think at that particular time, they had just shut the music off because that area is kind of a dead zone for my phone because I'm too cheap to buy Pandora, I guess, and save music. But, um, Anyway, it just cut off, and, and next thing I know, that whatever that was, was looking at my dog as it stopped, looked over and kind of saw me, and I thought, well, why is that thing, and why is that guy wearing those sweats, and it, that's really old sweats, but they're tapered, and it's just, so many things were going through my mind right then about the way it looked. It didn't look anything. I'm gonna go ahead and say it. I know it wasn't a Sasquatch. I'm gonna, I just want to say it wasn't. It wasn't a Sasquatch, but it was something. And, it, and I later found out, come to see the Anubis and 
you know, some Egyptian drawings of the Anubis looked really familiar, and I thought, well, that's what it was, but if we don't have the Anubis over here, we would have something more representative of a dog man. It was kind of like a little miniature epiphany. But that thing looked at me and started running down that hill and crossed the trail. By the time it crossed the trail, it stopped and it just, it crossed its arms. It had these crazy looking hands that looked like that, posed behind the tree, looked at me, saw me coming down the hill, just kind of dropped its shoulder and took one step to the left. And I passed it, not two seconds after I last saw it three seconds and it was gone. I looked over my shoulder thinking it was going to jump out from behind that tree or catch me from the left side. I, you know, at that time I knew it was on the right side, but I didn't know if it was going to jump me from behind, but I stopped to catch Sabo and it took him 20, 30 seconds to come down to me, but he followed about that exact same trail that whatever that dog man, shadow person, I'm up, I mean, it's something. Um, which we might break into later about another experience, but, and it, it just, I, when I saw it and I knew it was coming, it looked like it was coming in my direction, it turned and it started like its, its, its right leg looked like, looked more like a dog leg to me, but it looked more like it was chugging like an old steam piston, how it would just kind of start off and you know, the piston starts building pressure and starts turning and then next thing you know, it releases that pressure and completes that cycle. It took about three of those steps, really awkward looking steps where I was thinking something's not right. This thing is wounded, it's hurt. It's, it's old maybe, I don't, I, you know, and things were going through my mind. It just took off in front of me, running from my upper left down to that hill that I showed you, mm -hmm. down and to the right and cross that trail. And I, I, I at first assumed that those trees were maybe five foot off there, more like eight foot off the trail, but close enough it was big enough after you know having a little bit of help you know kind of standing next to it and and, and actually coming back to the spot and, and talking with Miguel about it um, it just it realized it might have been bigger than eight foot you know because it, it just it would I would uh, coming down that hill on a bike you know you got your perceptions a little altered I'm on a taller bike 29 inch rims Probably, probably on the since I was pedaling so hard, I think I was, I might have even been standing up. But uh, I don't know, I think I'm pretty sure I was sitting, but I remember I picked up the pace because I was resigned to this is it. I mean, it's it's death by dog or, or <laughs> one hell of a story. Mm -hmm. and, the, and thank God it's a one hell of a story because. It, it could have, it could have, it could have been just missing, <laughs> you know, who knows? It, once, I mean, um, once the creature hid behind the tree, it, it completely disappeared. You never saw it again. Right. Cause it, it, it took like an audible step over and not audible. I'm sorry. It took like a physical step to its left, like a, like just a step. Cause it kind of lowered its arm again. Mm -hmm. Cause it was like this and it kind of lowered its shoulders and just did this little dip, not even a dip, just took a step to the left. And I thought, Oh shit. And by that time, I'm going you know, 17 to 22 miles an hour, booking it down that hill. It'd be fun to check it on the GPS, see how fast I was, you know, how, what, prox approximately how fast I was going. And I, I mean, it, and I looked over to see if it was there and it wasn't there. And I turned around, I stopped 20, maybe 40 yards after that, get my dog. And I know I was there 10, 20 seconds waiting on his stealth to catch up and come down that hill. But he was, I ain't, he's, he's, He's had this wild side just about ever since that day, and it's it's hard to work it out of him. He's got this anxiety now when it, and, and it's not just when we're here; it's any time we're in the woods. It seems like he, if you let him off a leash, he's just he wants to find every little scent, every little bug, everything. Um, he just you can't stop him. He's got a lot of energy. Most energy that's the most highest energy dog I've ever had in my life. Yeah. So, but he seems to be doing better on a leash. So. What color did you say it was? A gray color? Gray, like like a pair of like ash gray or the same color of those old sweats, you know, the old, like we used to have them in the 80s, you know, jazzercise and, you know, <laughs> um, it, it, just, it was gray. I didn't, I couldn't even tell that it was fur. It just, it, other than the shape, the head seemed to have like, if it was a human, one, it was a big damn head. 
and it seemed like it would have had a hoodie on is what it kind of seemed like at first to me like sweats but it had the hood on but maybe with some earphones on or something just the way that the head looked and the snout what well, didn't look to be extremely long but it looked longer than normal or longer than the, it wasn't a pug shaped face and it was just kind of an outline but because i was i mean i was quite a ways away when i first started seeing it and if if you if i were to go stand up there in this orange shirt and have you ride it on your bike you'd get a, another perspective because you i would i would have been because this thing because just seeing you walk up that hill to where you where i thought it was from that different angle mm -hmm. I mean, you were, I could only really see you. I mean, you seemed like you're about that tall really? and about that big around or that, that wide walking through there. Cause you were walking, you were like, you were trying to step it out. Mm -hmm. And this thing moved smooth. You were, I saw you moving. There were some parts where you were like, you know, ducking and diving and trying to get away around the briars. This thing moved down that hill. Like it was stepping over everything. It just wouldn't, whatever was in its path was not a path. was not, it was not an obstacle. It, mm -hmm. it, it made its own paths. Yeah. What you time know, of day was this? This would have had to have been, because I, I know I was out here probably at 8 o'clock in the morning. And probably on the, started riding no later than probably about 8.30 by the time I got, got in the parking lot, was wondering about all the, because there, there was two police, or two Corps of Engineer police cars and two game warden trucks there with probably at least two other trucks. And on the trucks were trailers that appeared to have some side-by-sides. Okay. And um, so finding out later and talking to the Corps of Engineers, it wasn't that Monday, I think it was the next Tuesday, I finally called them and they said, yeah, we had some hog hunting going on out there and they probably had that whole entire park shut down for hogs. And here I am <laughs> riding through their hunting area. Well, they, ended up, they were just flying from here as a base of operations. No telling where they were hunting because I, I couldn't hear any shots or anything. But uh, mm -hmm. that helicopter had something to do with that. When I finally got on the trail and, and realized that the, well, after that helicopter had taken off and I'd parked and I looked up here saw the vehicles and then realized by getting closer that they were Corps of Engineers and Game Wardens and one of the trailers had looked like looked to be probably about a 500 gallon uh, fuel tank on the back of it and there was some signage on it like advertising mm -hmm. I didn't catch the name but the, I know the, the helicopter was a, black, a red and black uh, Hughes 500 or McDonnell Douglas MD 500 uh, just depends on what year it was. Do you think their presence had something to do with the sighting you had? I think, I, th I think them being here could have, could have attracted something that might feed off the carcasses. Mm -hmm. There might have been enough carnage that there was just, it just, you never know. How many did they shoot? I don't, wouldn't know, you know. Um, I think that the additional sounds, the quietness of the park, the whole entire campgrounds was shut down. Um, and I had been out here the weekend before blasting music. I didn't see or hear nothing. I didn't, I mean, they weren't out here the first weekend I was out here. The second weekend is when I saw them, the helicopter. But it was just, you know, from the, from the get go, it was just an odd day. Like why did, why did I have that little time advancement feeling mm. you know i i've, I've no don't know that that's ever happened at any other time in my life but do you think that's like <clears throat> you think that's like missing time some <clears throat> type of wormhole something anything strange like that i think i think it was maybe something maybe subconscious in me something inside of me saying hey look up you need to be up here, you need to hit the gas. And I wasn't doing that because I'm stubborn, I don't speed. Yeah, I don't know if that was it, but I think, um, I think there, it, it had to have been connected. I don't know if it's, if it's maybe, if, if I've had the experiences that I've had, if something is trying to maybe make contact with me or it's my subconscious saying that, 
you know, I'm seeing something that other people don't see because maybe I'm on a different wavelength. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I just, I, I persist in just, I think about things differently and I take more time to think about things and I just, I'm not a, how can I say it? It just, you don't, when you see something like that, it just, you, I, I, I can see why people, you know, look at people with stories like this as they're crazy because it seems crazy until you're that guy that was like, what the? And then you start re you're researching it. I never researched Bigfoot. I just always was like, yeah, there's people out there that do it. There's, you know, I, you, who can, you know, I can't doubt the 50 witnesses that have foot, you know, have, have taken imprints of their feet, you know? Cause I went to a few Bigfoot conferences and took a couple notes and, you know, shook, shook, uh, Bob Gimlin's hand and, uh, you know, just, just hung out, but I didn't, you know, I didn't absorb that culture. And then once I saw that, it's just like, damn. And then I would have never thought dog man exists. I mean, if you would have asked me after Bigfoot, even I would have just said, no, no, Bigfoot's like the pinnacle of, of the cryptid. It's, which I wouldn't have, I, I, cryptid. I, I probably wouldn't have known that word until after, you know, 22 or used it much. I knew, I know, I know I knew the word, but I've used it a hundred times since. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, how do you, how do you, how do you sit there and see one thing and then be like, yeah, yeah, all that other shit, you know, that's bullshit. And the next thing you know, just a few months later, cause remember it was, it was October 21st or so of 22 when I had my experience out in Washington. And so then I turn around, I see in less than a year or less than six, like three months, six months, less than six months, sorry. Here I am seeing something completely different. Something that I wouldn't have, like, I would have discounted, like I, I would have discounted Ghost up until about a year ago. <laughs> Yeah. You know, like, oh, people who see ghosts, or, you know, there's things, oh, you can't get pictures of them, you know, whatever. But now I'm like, how can I, how can I say I saw what I saw and expect anybody to believe me if I can't see what they, you know, understand what they saw, you know? So, and then I just, okay, and now I just got a different set of friends. <laughs> you know, they're, they're different. They think different. And that's what I like about the community. Um, is they 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 know something is different, and they and they and they open their mind enough to say it's at least possible. Let's at least look. You know, hey, maybe we'll research. Maybe we'll go to the woods a couple of times. Oh shit! Did we just spend the last six months of our life every weekend out in the woods looking for this thing? Getting people interested in it's science, baby. <laughs> you know, just you know, that's what I enjoy about it. You know. So was the creature bow legged? Is that? Kind of had a dog leg. Like a dog leg? <laughs> yeah, just, okay. you can't explain it by any other word than what it is. It was definitely, a, it, it looked like some kind of ball and socket hip mm. because it just, the way it drove like a piston, those three times, doom, doom, doom. And then it, it took three times, progressively got a little faster each time. And then at that third one was this, it was gone. And I, and I want to, I'm going to stand up. Is that going to? Yeah, that's fine. All right. But uh, yeah, it just, what do you, I, I, I refuse to say I didn't see what I saw. Mm. And the people who discounted me were, I, I thought the people that I could trust the most and end up, they were the first to discount me. And I'm starting to learn that if there is some kind of woo to Bigfoot, it'd have to be some pretty big woo. If, if I don't believe in it 100%, there's too, too many, too many witnesses, too many w people to sit there and go, I saw what I saw. This is my evidence. This is a 17 inch track. That's what I want. I want to be able to walk up to my sister and say, I cast this last week, you know, or yesterday. Call me a liar again, <laughs> you know? Right. Uh, I, I don't, I'm not mad at her for it. I'm just, that's how I talk to her. <laughs> it's like, don't call me a liar. <laughs> I'm yeah. not. I'm not making this shit up. None, I, I, if, I, if I was gonna make it up, I would tell people I didn't care about, <laughs> mm. you know?
Well, with these trails being paved, it's like easy to sneak up on things. Yeah, but that's it. I didn't even know those people walked up on us. Well, I know. I, I saw him coming. I saw him kind of alert mm -hmm. to him. Yeah, I saw him looking. And then, uh, but yeah, that's. I think I think when somebody does find Bigfoot, they're going to get him from their video camera in their car. Or they're going to be on an electric bike or a bicycle somehow. They're going to, or in it with a drone. Patterson was, um, and Bob Gimlin, they were on yeah. horses. Yeah. I, I think horses would stand a great chance. Well, I just interviewed a guy. It was either that or down here. I think it was down here. Yeah, I interviewed a guy. He's having activity here. He said the spillway. Yeah, all right, yeah, because this right here, I think the spillway is right down in here. Really? So, yeah. Oh, well, that lines up. There we go. Yeah. Area. Mm -hmm. We leave the Corps of Engineer land in Greenville, Missouri, and head up north to my friend Bill's property in the Mark Twain National Forest because we know it's a safe place to camp and we weren't really sure about the rules in the area in Greenville. Me and Andy came out here to the Mark Twain National Forest at Bill's place and it's just a better place to camp. I wouldn't say better, but um, we don't have to worry about anything. So we're excited to be out here. And then um, if you want to set up your tent anywhere, that's fine too. There's a fire ring over there. We can set up chairs and sit out yeah. and um, burn oh, some wood. Yeah. yeah, that's where they come up at. Whenever we, whenever we had the Sasquatch come up, we were over there by the fire and just came up right over here, one side of the cabin. There's two other ones moving around yeah. the area back there. Well, he's, I'm surprised. He's, he's not doing his, I gotta find bug shit. Yeah, he looks kind of worried. Yeah, he does. You worried, buddy? Let us know if Sasquatch comes up. Hmm? Ears back. Yeah, he's, he's, not as, he's not as wily as he was. He's like, I'm going to stay next to you. Yeah, I should have brought my, my hammock too. I have a pretty good one. Okay. Well, we'll set up before it gets too dark and uh, yeah. get things going. I got Subway for tonight. Yeah, I got chicken. Fried stuff. chicken and I got some potato salad and stuff like that. Okay, cool. There's a fridge in there in case we need to put stuff in there. I probably do. Doing Bigfoot research can become a very cumbersome task and essentially you just become the bait and you're waiting for something to happen. I have noticed from past experiences the more we do research in the same areas the less and less happens over time so it could be possible the Sasquatch pick up on the cameras, the people, all the gear and they kind of know what we're up to. It's really hard to say, but overall, I think the same thing happens with hunting in an area when you're going out after turkey or deer. After a while, you see less and less over time. It's best to hit up an area when it's hot and do as much research as possible in the amount of time that you can because after a while, the activity will fizzle out 
and it won't take place anymore. I can't say that for sure, but that's been my experience. Surely, after time, they will come back. And I think, again, it's the same with wildlife. Eventually, they come back, but it's hard to gauge when that will happen and where. We're gonna hang an audio recorder while we are camping here. And hopefully the Sasquatch are around so we can capture some good audio. And um, we have the time set on this puppy, so we're gonna set it up in a tree as high up as we can, and then go back to camp, start a fire, and then hope that the Sasquatch come out. I don't have my camcorder right now, so if something happened. That would really suck. The audio recorder is set up. Yeah, like a thud, and you could hear like the leaves, like <laughs> We'll go over here and check it out. All right, we are setting up the Zoom H6 audio recorder, and we're facing it into that hauler right there. And hopefully they come up like they did before. Of course, we're out here just for a day or two, and I'm not expecting something to happen, but you never know. We're gonna try to play some um, frequency music, some Native American drums, um, possibly some whale sounds just because they use like the sonar and um, maybe like audio of planet earth that does have frequency so I'm going to try that tonight hopefully the zoom audio recorder picks something up and we'll be ready to go Should have just not. I should have just let the fox sound play. Yeah. Doesn't sound as natural playing every every yeah. animal in the kingdom. I don't know that we have red fox like dogs. They do out here for some reason. When they went up, when they came up at the wood line, right when it got dark, that story I told you. Yeah. Um, Bill's dog, like after all the wood knocking happened, they were breaking stuff. Bill's dog comes out of the woods. And like he was happy, you know, wagging his tail, tongue sticking out, happy. And I guess he was probably rolling around with the Sasquatch. It's hard to say. Some weird sounding coyotes. Yeah. Coyotes are calling back. I muted it. T-Rex sounding or cattle. <laughs> yeah. it's starting to sound like Jurassic Park out here, guys. He's just a spaz. That whole keeping his nose down and running and just doing circles. Mm -hmm. Gotta quit that. All right, we have a JBL K-1 
camo speaker that clips onto the backpack. We're gonna try to play some tunes on it. Um, let's see what we got. Somebody I know suggested that I do the throat singing song. They went off for a while. Yeah. As soon as I got my camera set up, they stopped. Yeah, it's usually about, about a minute, if not two minutes. And about as long mm -hmm. as they're going to pay attention. Yep. So we just did some more coyote calls and we got the coyotes to holler back. Well, I guess we freaked out a skunk. Dang it. And that does stink. Maybe that's what that was down there at the edge of the yard. All right, there's a bucket back here in the woods and um, we got some leftover fried chicken. It's not from the Colonel, but from a deli somewhere around here in Missouri. So I'm gonna put this in the bucket, get that smell out there. But honestly, it's been so windy tonight. It's been hard to um, film. It's been hard to hear. I'm sure the audio is not getting anything good, but that's a lot of the trips out here. We work really hard. And um, come to find out that it's a crappy night to do filming, but oh well, we're out here nonetheless. And the only way to know if there's something going on is to be out there. But yeah, there's just so much forest out in Missouri, out in North America, that this type of activity can take place anywhere. And you just don't know where it's going to strike next. It's up to um, locals or people that live in these woods to contact people like me and let me know when it's happening so I can get out there and document it because um, yeah, this used to be an active area, but now there's nothing going on. It's kind of weird. Down the road, there's activity going on. Um, the other weekend, I was camping out there at Adam and Shelby's place from the Half Inch Wrench crew and 12.30 at night, one o'clock, we heard two loud whoops, or at least I did. I was still awake because I wasn't able to go back to sleep, but that's not too far away from here. So it's hard to say why that area is having activity and this area with the ginormous forest is not, which is kind of weird because um, Shelby just lives right off, right off a road. There's the creek. So it's like a long strip of woods and um, that road goes along there and there's houses throughout the area so there's not even as much woods as there is here now nearby at Sh shelby and adams there's a ginormous woods and we hiked there but we didn't really find too much so it's kind of weird that these things can just get so close to people's homes and then when you go out there in the deep you don't really find too much which is a mind bl blower but um yeah when we were out there it was freezing cold like it is right now um, the wind would pick up and it'd make it even colder. You guys know what winter's like, especially when the sun goes down. Well, when we were out there, it was like somebody opened up a furnace. Like you could feel the hot air hit you. And um, I've, never, I've never experienced anything like that in my life. So the hot air out of nowhere is really unusual, especially during the winter time and um, when it's nighttime. I have no explanation for that other than um, seemed like a portal opened because whenever that hot air feeling came over us um the leaves were like moving and curling kind of like um when you're burning leaves outside the leaves that are up above like how they start to blow around that's what it was like it was that hot i mean i just don't know i've heard with paranormal activity when things happen it gets really cold but in this case we were outside and it got really hot. So, um, yeah, I don't know what it was. It's like dragon's breath. 
That's what I'm gonna call it, Dragon's Breath. But yeah, I'm hoping something happens tonight, but I'm not really anticipating too much. Um, Andrew went to bed around nine or so. He was really tired from camping the night before. So he's getting some rest now and I'm on guard duty. If something happens, I'm gonna go in there and shake the bed and be like, wake up, wake up. Sasquatch is outside. I'm sure there's something around um, earlier. I did some call blast and the coyotes went off down here. And before that, whenever I was doing call blast, they went off way out there. We did hear some strange sounds, but it was too far away to tell. And then the cow, the cattle over there would um, go off. So it's like, did I even hear what I originally thought I heard? Or was it just the cows? Can't win if you don't play the game, guys. You gotta play the game. Wish I had somebody to hold the camera up for me and we can go walking around the deep woods. It's so hard to like set up the tripod and film things by yourself especially at nighttime daytime it's not so bad it's tired it makes you tired but um yeah nighttime it's difficult to to do too much sasquatch theory is a lone wolf guys is there anybody out here are there any sasquatch Will you guys show yourselves to me? Do something for the camera? Um, the camera won't hurt you. It will not steal your soul. If you guys are able to go invisible, why do you care if somebody gets video footage of you guys? If you guys are not from this world or dimension, what does it matter? Are you guys afraid of something? Are you guys part of the dark side of this planet? Do you guys like to deceive people? Is your guys' agenda to trick human beings into thinking that you're something you're possibly not? Knock if you guys can hear me. This is the exact spot where Bill, the property owner, had his encounter. And the fallen tree is still here. That's why they have the bucket up. They've been trying to feed these things. And um, it's hard to say. It's hard to say if anything's been taking the food or if it's just like little critters and stuff, but I wasn't here whenever they were doing the gifting. Maybe I was in some of my other episodes, but I'm not sure if they continued to do the research. Sounded like an owl possibly. I demand that you guys do something for me now. Can I say that? Can I demand it?
What's your purpose here? Why do you guys like to trick people and make them look crazy? Are you guys a bunch of scaredy cats? Kind of have to look up and down through here because it's such a steep hill. Woo! Got a rabbit that just took off. That freaked me out for some reason. There's the old cabin. I guess the Sasquatch of Missouri are scared. Or they're a bunch of cowards. You hear that? I'm calling you guys cowards. Bunch of big babies. If you're so smart, do something. Trash monkeys. Nah, I didn't really mean all that, but. Dogs started barking. Cows are going off too. Cows sound like they're in trouble. Can you guys talk into the audio recorders that I set up out there in the woods? Can you guys scream for me? Can you do a wood knock? Can you guys do anything? I know you guys are around here. I promise you guys before that if you do something, I won't come back. I guess you guys don't believe me because you know I'd come back for sure. But I'm serious. If you guys do something for the camera now, I'll leave you guys alone in this area. Do you not like the cameras? Give me a sign that you don't like the cameras. Huh? I guess they like the cameras. Do you guys want to be on film? Walk behind me. Give me a sign. Here, I'll look away. Maybe the camera will pick it up. What do we got? It does sound like our guest encountered some type of cryptid creature on the bike trail, but what he encountered is really hard to say. Was it a shadow person, a Sasquatch, or a dog man? 
from the description that he gave it does sound like a dog man especially with how big the creature was in comparison to the tree and whenever i went on top of the hill not a whole lot happened at the mark twain national forest there was nothing on audio and we didn't hear anything too strange that night there were some distant howls that we think possibly could have been a bull or some cattle i would like to find a place that is currently active and either i go out in the woods and find that on my own or somebody contacts me and tells me hey i'm having sasquatch activity right now get out here i think that'll be our best bet for capturing some data and I think it'll be the best way to capture some activity on film. I have no doubt that Greenville, Missouri does hold Sasquatch, but where they are, I have no idea. If there is anyone out there listening that has had current activity, please contact me. Or if you know somebody who is having activity, let them know and I'll come out and possibly do some research. I appreciate everyone for listening and watching the videos. And if you have a Bigfoot encounter that you would like to share, please contact me at sasquatchtheory at outlook.com. Thank you everyone for watching. Be safe out there and until the next one.